So entropy. <laughs> Who is entropy? Oh God. Well, it, ironically enough, it was originally my gaming handle when I was in high school, <laughs> but it was my, I guess you call it a pseudonym of my first blog. I started blogging. My roommate had a blog in college and he and I, the, the pickup artist thing was popular at the time. And so mm-hmm. there was a lot of kind of writing store, like, oh, I went on a date last weekend. This is what happened. Mm-hmm. And my, him and another friend of mine were kind of always egging me to start a blog, dude, start a blog. And it was really just because, you know, we all read each other's stories and stuff and they wanted to read mine. So that's actually how it first started was just mm-hmm. me, my, my roommate, like peer pressuring me into sharing stupid drunk things I did. <laughs> and what year is this roughly? This was 2007. 2007. Okay. I was 23 and doing things that 23 year olds do. <laughs> and there was, there was really no, again, Forrest Gumping my way into it, right? Like there's no ambition or at that stage, there was no ambition or kind of mm-hmm. vision for this. Like, it's just a cool thing that my friends want me to do. And I, I enjoyed it too. I found that was kind of actually the first point in my life that I discovered like, Hey, it's really fun to sit down and write something just because you enjoy it. Not because it's a term paper or whatever. So that went on for about a year. And I don't think, you know, the quote unquote readership was probably never more than a dozen people. But then something strange started happening, which is people that I had never met started reading it and commenting on it. And I have no idea how these people found me or where they came from. And that was a little bit mind blowing to me. And it was around that time I started to get very curious. This also coincides. I was just out of school, the Great Recession was going on, so there were no jobs at anywhere. I was basically living on a friend's couch. And it, it kind of opened up this idea of like, hey, there's internet stuff you can do. Like you can, this blogging thing is that actually a thing. You can promote products and get commissions. You can put ads on your on your site. Like you can make a little bit of chump change if you think about it and are strategic about it. And this is so this story is going to lead to you Tim. I got to I got to warn you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I started getting curious about I guess you would call it like kind of the online marketing, online blogging world and it was around that time I discovered 4 hour work week. I think it had just come out or been out for like a year or something. Yeah, that was April 2007 it came out. Seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah. So I found that and I read it. So to your credit, I read that book and it blew open my mind in terms of like what the possibilities were. I was just like, oh my God, you could do all sorts of shit online and, you know, automate this stuff. And oh my God, I'm going to be living in Argentina and this is going to be great. <laughs> and like, I'm like, sign me up, dude. Like, <laughs> let me, here, Arge- I'll go buy. Argentina, here I come. Exactly. So I had a very love hate experience with that book, but in hindsight, both were good. So the love side of it was, it just opened my mind to so many possibilities. The hate side of it was, I, I thought it was going to be so much easier. I thought, you know, like <laughs> the way, yeah. the way you describe some of those examples, I'm like, oh yeah, this was like a month tops. Like, <laughs> you yeah. know, meanwhile, a year and a half later, I'm still grinding like 12 hours a day. <laughs> so, you know, I went through a period of like, God damn that Tim Ferriss, like, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> you and I have had a complicated relationship. You're not aware of most of it, but. Oh, tell me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it was a difficult, but very, very rewarding period in mm-hmm. terms of just trying all these different websites and blogs and SEO pages and AdSense pages and 90% of it doesn't work. And then the 10% that works, like you're making, it brings in a hundred bucks a month and you're like, okay, well, if I can just do 10 more of those, <laughs> maybe that gets me somewhere. And so it was one of those grinds that you look back with like some nostalgia and like, you know, mm-hmm. there's a little bit of romance to it. Like I would never, I don't think I'd ever be able to stomach it today, but as yeah. a broke 25 year old, I'm really proud of it. And what was the website 
one of the primary websites at the time. Oh, man. So back then, Google was rewarding blogs. And the idea was you build up a blog, you create a bunch of articles about whatever the topic is, you get a little bit of traffic, and then you either put ads or do like affiliate links. So I had a, I had a blog for like feng shui. I had a blog for teeth whitening strategies. I had a blog for... <sighs> God, I'm trying to remember. Oh, like bartending, like mixology and bartending. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, like half the stuff I didn't actually know anything about. I just Googled other stuff and rewrote it. Not the greatest work I've ever done, but in a way it was putting in the hours. And meanwhile, I had the Entropy blog, which was still writing about my dating life. And ironically, I guess I had to learn this the hard way. That was the thing that actually caught traction because... Mm -hmm. It was the thing that I actually cared about and I actually thought about a lot from my day to day. And probably also enjoyed writing about more so than teeth whitening and feng shui. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred times more. Not to knock either one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Going to get a lot of dentist hate mail coming to you. <laughs> I don't want to miff the teeth whitening young adult novel writers out there. Yeah, right. So that's what started to take off. And I kind of found myself, you know, I, in college, I dabbled in the pickup artist stuff and my blog, as my blog started to get accepted in those circles, guys started asking me to coach them. They wanted to do calls. They wanted to meet up with me. You know, they wanted to bring me down to New York and go out the bars with me. And as a guy with nothing else going on, that was really enticing. It was really exciting. And so I kind of got sucked into that world for about I'd say a year, year and a half, and and then was pretty strongly turned off by it. It felt mm -hmm. very, obviously there was a lot of toxic advice in that industry, but also just the, the dynamics of, everything was so performative, you know? Like mm -hmm. it, nobody actually really cared if you were having a good time or not. Nobody cared if the woman you met was really smart or, interesting or funny you know it was just like did you make out with her did you get her phone number no all right you're you're not on the scoreboard tonight you know like that was <laughs> that was kind of the extent of their thinking and so i started to become pretty grossed out by it but also at the same time i realized that there was very much an opportunity to to integrate some of those more healthy emotional elements into it so I rebranded my website, my blog, my little blog as Practical Pickup. I started using my real name. I started promoting honesty, vulnerability, actually giving a shit about who you're talking to <laughs> instead of just trying to like press the right buttons to to get her into bed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I guess you would say that was another like that's when that ball started picking up yeah. bigger and bigger items.